So Democrats in Congress are opposed to Donald Trump's presidency in every conceivable way. Cabinet nominees are confirmed at their slowest pace since George Washington's first term. Some Democrats are already talking about impeachment. A new political poll says most Democrats support obstruction. Does that mean this will continue the gridlock. Democratic Congressman Jim Hines of Connecticut says despite this obstructionism, Democrats have been more accommodating than Republicans were under the previous president. He joins us now from Baltimore. Congressman, thanks for joining us. So it does hey, seem... Tucker. And I, look, I think that the Republicans did oppose uh, President Obama pretty much from the beginning, but they didn't call for his impeachment two weeks in. I mean, this does seem like a new standard of unreasonableness. Yeah, but Tucker, the Democrats are not calling for the president's impeachment just because a couple or one or two or three may have. They're not calling for his impeachment. Most of us recognize that if he commits a high crime or a misdemeanor, and oh, by the way, the political realities of this are such that until, and this will happen, but until a majority of the Republicans in the House see him as a political liability, it ain't happening. Yeah, no, I mean, that, that's true, but still, it's, it's pretty, it's, it says something. So, I mean, just for example, you, you had these votes, and you had the, the Senate Minority Leader, Chuck Schumer, voted against Elaine Chao at Transportation, who was, of course, married to Mitch McConnell, the Senate Majority Leader. Like, what principle was he upholding by voting against Elaine Chao? Did he really think she was, like, an extremist or racist or something? Like, what was that? I, I don't know, but look, it's, 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 I, I, I don't know what's in Chuck Schumer's head, but, but no, there's no question that what used to be a body of great comedy of people working together and showing great deference to each other is not that anymore. And it's not just Chuck Schumer. Look, a lot of Democrats are still smarting over the fact that Judge Gorsuch, who by all accounts is a widely respected jurist, nonetheless is going to take a seat that Mitch McConnell decided without historical precedent and certainly without rooting in the Constitution that President Obama wasn't going to get to even get a hearing in the Senate. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it seems to be a pretty ugly place these days, but you can hardly pin the blame on, uh, on Democrats here. Well, you, I mean, they share part of the blame, but I think you make a, you make a fair point. They didn't even have a hearing uh, on Merrick Garland, and, and I think they should have. Okay, so I agree with you on that. Right. But what I worry about is that there are a lot of ideas that. that Trump has that Democrats under normal circumstances would be open to. They say they believe in these things, and yet because they're calling him a Nazi, they won't even talk about them. So just for example, throw a couple. Infrastructure, Canadian drug reimportation. No entitlement reform. I mean, these are things that Democrats have supported for like a generation. Are they going to meet him on these things? Are they going to support them, even though they come from Trump? Yeah, but Tucker, step, step back a second. Calling him a Nazi? Come on. What if we'd characterize the entire Republican Party as Joe Wilson, who shouted out that the president was a liar? You've always got your loudmouths in, 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 in both parties. The Democratic Party is not calling President Trump a Nazi. We're calling him profoundly pr uh, problematic. I sit on the Intelligence Committee. I spend a good part of my day looking at what Russia is trying to do to us and what they did to us in the election, and yet the, the new president finds it in his day to call out Nordstrom's, to call a judge, a so-called judge, to attack the media, but he hasn't made one critical comment okay. about Russia. I mean, okay, you, right. you're still, you're still, I think we've, we've talked here. about this before. And by the way, if you can actually find evidence that they influenced the outcome of the election, I, well, let's, let's do an hour on it, okay? But I want to get to the oh, issue is that really the quick. standard that they succeeded? It's not that they tried, it's that they succeeded. That's the but this standard? This is relevant in any way to the lives of anybody other than Democratic Congress. Relevant. Like, that'd be, but we can do a special uh, on it. But let me, just, let me just get to the policies here. So, this is an esoteric one, but it's been up for debate for 20 years. Canadian drug reimportation, the idea that you could buy drugs from Canada, they're cheaper, American-made, but coming from Canada. No Republican's been for this. Trump is for this. Democrats have always said, we're for this. Will they be for it when Trump suggests it? You know, you make a very good and valuable point here, and it's a valuable point because you're absolutely right. Look, coming from Connecticut, where I come from, I am, I am so hungry for an infrastructure plan that helps the fact that, you know, so that one of the biggest economic drags in my part of the world is, is that people can't get to work in the morning. So yeah, you know what? Whatever else Trump says, uh, if he gets serious about infrastructure, you almost can't not work with the Republicans to make that happen. And you're right, drug reimportation, any number of things. But the, re the, the, the reason this is really disappointing is that when he really goes off the rails, when he, you know, when he starts, uh, when he starts sort of apparently supporting Russia, when he starts calling out judges, when he starts damaging things like the freedom of the press, the window begins to close. As, as you've pointed out, you, you hear it from elements of our party already saying, under no circumstances should you work with this guy. Now, by the way, that's exactly what the Republicans did eight years ago, so I'm hardly going to criticize that instinct. But it is sad, because he has said some things that we would love to work with on, but by God, he's closing that window pretty rapidly. Oh, I mean, somebody, who, whose interest are you serving? I mean, what you're saying is he says naughty things on Twitter or he doesn't have a lot of self-control. Therefore, I'm not going to work on behalf of my constituents for things I've said for years I was for. I mean, 
That is, how did is that I, Did I just say that? I, I, I just <laughs> made the point. I'm that I, I think I'm I used the word I would said. be really but hungry. I, 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 I think, that you know, uh, try as you might, Tucker, what I said was I, I would be really hungry to work on infrastructure, to work on some of the things that he's talked about, but the political realities are such that if he keeps behaving the way he's behaving, and look, this, his behavior appalls Republicans as much as it repels uh, Democrats. If he keeps doing that, he's gradually closing a window, which will make it harder and harder to reach across the aisle. No, look, I, I have all kinds of needs in my district, and I want to work with a Republican president, but there does come a point. And it's not just being naughty on Twitter, Tucker. It's, it's striking at the very foundations of the freedom of the press, of how the intelligence community serves the president. That's the not freedom just of the press, being naughty really, on Twitter. I think the Obama administration actually pulled the phone records of one of our, our reporters here at Fox because they didn't like what he was reporting. I don't remember a lot of Democrats, you know, passing symbolic resolutions denouncing that on behalf of, of the free press. Or when so the I wasn't happy about that either. I can't, remember, I can't remember if I spoke up about it. Look, I, there were things in the Obama administration. But, but, Tucker, try as you might. Just because you can find one example of a naughty thing that the other administration did does not justify far more egregious violations. Look, President Obama never called it the failing New York Times. He never even picked on you guys, even though he was more than warranted in doing so. So trying to what? draw an equivalence here is just absurd. I think I was a little more attentive to the former president's statements on the press, perhaps, than you. No, but anyway, I just hope that the Fox issues can rise, can rise to the fore. Congressman, thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks, Tucker.